Good morning, everyone. So in this video, I want to explain to you something called Dunning-Kruger effect. Um, as you know, in the previous video, I explained the imposter syndrome. So let's talk about something a little bit different today. So for, first, for credibility, my name is Khaled. I have been a dentist for uh, 20 years. I run, I own my own dental practice, Lakeside Dental Spa in Harvard Bay in Queensland. And I took it from one chair to 10 chairs, and we started with a team members of three staff members, and now we have 40 staff members. And you can check my details below for credibility. So um, Dunning-Kruger effect, probably is something you need to research more so you can understand it more in details. But if I want to give you my thoughts on this um, topic, and again, if my thoughts are helpful to you, great. If not, you can just ignore it and move on to something else. Because um, for the, as a disclaimer, I'm not a psychologist and it's a very complex thing to, to explain. But I will explain to you what my thoughts on it. So Dunning-Kruger effect is... Um, based on a lot of studies and research, and it's also controversial a little bit, but simply is um, someone with low skill set or low competence and high confidence. Um, so someone is very confident in something, but they don't have enough skills. They will perform a lot of the procedures and suddenly they will start to drop in the performance a little bit. Um, and then they will get to a level where they realize that, hopefully they realize that they're... Um, skills do not match their confidence. So how can it affect you as a practice owner or um, if, especially if you had an associate on that level and how to differentiate it from imposter syndrome? You will find with Dunning-Kruger effect is the dentist that's, who is working for you will be the opposite. They're not going to have too much self-awareness. They probably have lack of self-awareness. They're completely unaware of what's going on. So if you have a dentist, for example, that you look at their training, the ideal dentist suffering from this effect, look at their training, let's say they do or like a one day or two day implant training, or they haven't done a lot of training in full mouth rehabs or cosmetic dentistry. They've done like one simple course. And suddenly they're jumping into doing a lot of big cases. They want to place a lot of implants or they're placing a lot of implants or they're doing a lot of full mouth rehabs and they're getting good conversion because they have very high confidence. Um, be very cautious because Dentists who perform at that level without training and with high confidence can be a very scary mix. They're converting a lot because they're very confident. Patients can sense their confidence. They believe they can do it because they've watched other specialists doing it. But what will happen is eventually they will start to see some failures. But when they see those failures, they simply blame it on something else. So I'll give you one example. You hire a dentist who's only maybe three or four years in the dentistry. You look at the resume. They haven't done much training in full mouth rehab. Maybe they did like one day course, two day course, or they observed a specialist doing it for a couple of days. So they don't have the adequate training to manage full mouth rehabs. But suddenly they're getting a lot of patients interested on full mouth crowns, for example. And they actually convert those patients and they start into doing the wax up and the whole process. And then those cases take longer to finish or they're finishing really quick but they're coming with problems and complications and then when you go and confront them about those cases they always say oh the patient didn't listen to this or the patient didn't do that and i told the patient if they don't do one two three it's gonna fail there's always something else that is a problem not their dentistry be very very cautious because as a practice owner you can get probably fooled by the confidence uh, they can be very good talkers, they can talk really well, present themselves really well. Also, bring a lot of production to your practice, and this can probably mislead your judgment a little bit. So what you need to do is, you need to have really good analysis now. You need to look at the numbers and figures. You need to look at the history. If you don't have the good, adequate training, that's a red flag. Number, so you have to really separate yourself from the associate a little bit and look at the numbers with more... Um, you need to get your emotions out of the way and just analyze everything with as much facts as possible. Do they have enough training or not? How many cases they have done? How many cases are failing? How many cases are the patients are happy? Um, look at the records. Is there any like before and after bite wings, before and after photos? Analyze them really well. If you don't, if you're a practice owner, don't have the skill to analyze them, take them to a specialist or someone else you can trust to analyze them for you. And if you have the slightest doubt that something is not right, and you want to confront these associates, confront them, confront, confront them with facts, absolute facts. Here's what happened. Here's the outcome of the treatment. According to the standard of care, they didn't receive the good standard of care. This is not working. I don't think you can turn dentists with that attitude 
around, it's very hard. If they already have their lack of self-awareness, they have this high confidence, and they don't believe that they need to get the skills to match the confidence, it can be very, very hard to manage. And sometimes the ideal situation in that situation is to part away. So, but very rarely the dentist will come to you asking for help. And usually when they do and say, look, I'm suffering because of treatment, and they could be definitely suffering in a, in, sometimes, it's not because they want solutions. They try and sometimes to, they're going through a hard time, but they don't understand why. Or simply they're trying to also, I wouldn't say manipulate you, but they're trying to get you to be on their side a little bit more, not on the patient side or on the failure side. Or they're predicting a lot of failures are going to come and they're trying to get you to be a little bit softer towards them. So what do you do in that situation? Again, analyze the facts, be very honest with them, tell them, look, definitely what you're going through, it could be a combination of imposter, yes, syndrome, but also a Dunning-Kruger where you don't have the skill set to perform this procedure. You need to stop immediately and go and seek adequate training. And with those patients that are failing, do the right thing by them. I think now we're at the level where you need to refer them to a, give them a full refund or refer them to a specialist, pay the specialist to pick them up. It, those cases should have been done based on your experience and you need to improve your skills. If they take your feedback in a positive way and they apply those changes, Maybe there is hope they might turn around, but usually, from my experience, they might take the information from you and just ignore it and move on. Um, so it's much a harder thing to deal with compared to imposter syndrome, in my honest opinion. Why it happens, I think, again, it's triggered by a lot of childhood problems um, or childhood upbringing issues. If you are listening to this and you think you're suffering from Dunning-Kruger, I mean, it's very rare, because if you listen to this, it won't make any sense to you because you're really very high have very high confidence and you probably don't believe that you're you're not good enough so i don't think you'll benefit from that so this might benefit more of a practice owner who has an associate in the practice going through that process and how to manage them anyway if you find this information helpful make sure you like and share it. it's completely unfiltered um, if you want to hear more about my videos make sure you subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified when more when more videos are released thank you so much for listening it means a lot to me